Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Well, a very happy 99th birthday to Prince Philip. Philip is expected to celebrate quietly, taking part in video calls with the family. Biographer Robert Lacey said, He is suspicious of fuss, but I think there'll be a quiet glow of pride there and quite justified. That's always been his style. Low-key, but tremendously solid support. Victoria Murphy writes in Town & Country that Back in 2014, when Prince Philip was turning a mere 93 years of age, he attended a Buckingham Palace garden party on his birthday. It was a typically warm June day and some of the 8,000 guests on the lawn were lucky enough to be in line to chat with the royals. However, those hoping to wish the Duke a happy birthday were quietly advised by ushers. However, those hoping to wish the Duke a happy birthday were quietly advised by ushers not to mention it. And when one woman offered a present, he promptly asked her to hand it to someone else as he didn't want to lug it around the garden. A Ministry of Defence spokesperson told Yahoo UK, We can confirm that following consultation with key stakeholders, ceremonial gunfire from all saluting stations continues to be temporarily suspended due to the national COVID-19 restrictions. As such, the gun salute due to take place on Wednesday the 10th of June for the birthday of His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh will now not take place. Future such events will continue to be regularly reviewed in conjunction with current government COVID-related guidance. And turning to news, the Royal Vegas Casino has ranked the Royal CVs of the British Royal Family and ranked the Royals on who is the most qualified to be monarch. Not surprisingly, Queen Elizabeth tops the list. After all, she does have quite a lot of experience at the job. But who's number two? One might expect Charles, seeing as he is heir to the throne. He's not. In order, the casino ranks the most qualified as William at second, then Harry. Charles ranked fourth, followed by Kate, then Camilla, then Meghan. Insiders tell Newsweek that Meghan's address last week to graduating students at her old high school was off the cuff and not from notes. An insider said, as you can probably tell, it's pretty raw and she spoke without notes, but she's been having lots of conversations about the issue before filming. Meanwhile, People reports that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been talking to community leaders about how they can both learn more and contribute to the Black Lives Matter movement in the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd. They are holding calls with community leaders and organisations, but are doing that privately as they continue to see how they can play a role. But they also want to learn and talk about it like the rest of us. A source close to the couple tells People. And Prince William has been secretly manning a helpline for people in crisis, per The Mirror. The Duke of Cambridge has joined more than 2,000 volunteers who have trained to help people using the UK's first round-the-clock text messaging service, Shout 85258. William himself revealed the secret saying, I'm going to share a little secret with you guys, but I'm actually on the platform volunteering. Kate has also taken part in check-in and chat calls with those self-isolating. The Mirror reports they spoke to Conscious Youth, an organisation that works with young people from mainly black and other ethnic minority backgrounds in Huddersfield, Dewsbury and other parts of Kirklees in West Yorkshire. And from multiple sources, US prosecutors made a formal request to speak with Prince Andrew as part of their investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. A statement from his lawyers, Blackford's LLP, said... The Duke of York has, on at least three occasions this year, offered his assistance as a witness to the Department of Justice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times.